Hello, I'm Jeff Socek, uh, Director of Research and Development for Felt Bicycles. Inside the office earlier, we were looking at some uh, FEA analysis, which allows us to take the 3D CAD model and basically, with computer testing, simulate torsional stiffness and the types of forces that go through the frame when you're riding it. Well, actually, after we actually open the tooling and we start working on the layup structure, we do that same sort of testing out here in the laboratory. So in this case, what you see here is an AR1 frame, and basically what we do is we bolt it down to this fixture. As you can see, it's mounted only by the rear dropouts here rigidly, but then here at the head tube, you have a pivot block. So basically at about 500 millimeters on either side of the head tube center line, we start to measure the frame for de deflection and torsional rigidity. So what we do is we basically hang a predetermined amount of weight from the frame that flexes and torsionally flexes the frame and we can measure it. So basically what we're looking at is the frame's ability to keep the wheels in line. So you can imagine if you're going downhill or if you're sprinting on a bike, the last thing you want are the wheels to be moving back and forth on a plane. So by working with torsional rigidity, we can kind of see the, to the total stiffness of the frame and then therefore change the ride characteristics by changing the materials, either using more high modulus material or changing the fiber orientation. And by doing this, we can then tune the bicycle to be what it's designed for. So if it's a sprint bike, we can work on the stiffness for sprinting. If it's a, a, a crit bike, we can work on the bike being more responsive. So we do this testing for torsional rigidity. Then we'll also do a test for rear tire contact stiffness, which kind of will measure the rear triangle relative to the front triangle for stiffness. We'll do a BB stiffness where the frame is stood up vertically and we hang a weight off the BB to be able to measure the stiffness of it that way. And we'll also do some comfort testing as far as vertical testing to see how much vertical compliance it has. So, but basically we are able to do all the same simulation on the computer first to kind of optimize the design, optimize the shapes of the tubes. But then once the tooling's cut, we go ahead and do this to the actual frame when we're starting to dial in the layup. It typically takes about a year's time total to dial in the layup, and that's just dealing with the strength, the stiffness, and the weight of the frame. So even though we go through this testing, we find that the bike meets the proper, let's say the proper stiffness requirements, but it also meets the proper weight requirements, but we have to do strength testing as well. So there's many times we can get the bike to be very stiff and very light, but it won't pass testing. So with that, you have different types of tests that go for impact primarily. So you have a falling frame test where you'll actually load the frame with various weights and you drop it, and then it measures the frame's ability to handle like a drop off, like if you're going off of curb. Then we also do frontal impact testing where the frame is stood up vertically and a weight is dropped onto a rigid fork which is kind of like uh, hitting a pothole or something in the road. So and typically when we do this type of testing in an R&D situation, there's a, there's a series of standards by the EN standards we call them or the new ISO standards. And we typically will design our frame to be about 20% over what's required. Um, so for example, when we're doing fork testing, you'll see this fixture here, which is basically primarily doing for, for doing forks, but also it does our frames as well. We'll increase the height of the weight that's gonna be dropped on it by 20%. Therefore, we know that during the R&D process, which is going to be the best case scenario, everything is built 20% better than what it needs to be. So if there's any variations in manufacturing or there's any other problems, we're always that much above what the testing standards need to be.